We are backstage at the AT&T, ladies and gentlemen, center. Uh, Selena Gomez. Oh, my God. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? You look beautiful and amazing. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just in my little, my get up before meet and greet and stuff. So this is this is uh, a routine, routine before. This is me in my little, like, combat boots and just cozy t-shirt. I don't know if you can see, I don't know if you can see her boots, but. So and there's incense, there's candles here, so chamomile. Yeah. Uh, a relaxing kind of environment before the tour, before it starts up. Right. Is this usually the routine? Yeah, I, I have to have this set up everywhere I go. Just because you go to so many different places every day that you start to lose the feeling of home. So if you kind of have the same scent, which is why I've got the incense and like the same feeling, you can kind of bring home wherever essentially. So. Congratulations on uh, first top 10 U.S. hit, Come and Get It. I, it every time I talk to an artist, they're like, Top 10's a different level. Like they hit a top 20, you know, uh, they're in, in different top ones in right. different countries around the world, right. but top 10 in the U.S., why is that different for an artist? Well, first off, it's harder, I think, you know, where um, to be on the radio, it used to be completely opposite. It used to be that the radio wanted to, you know, wanted to play all the new stuff, but now it's like, it's a process of a lot of different things that people are going to nitpick and you got to get approval and then you got to do the right thing. So I think once you make it in the U.S., it's just like, it's just a different feeling. You still get excited when you hear a song on the radio? Of course I do, yeah. I was just with, um, I was just with my girlfriends in Miami and we heard it and I freaked out in the car. So yeah, <laughs> I still get excited, yeah. The tour, this is your first solo tour, mm -hmm. uh, the Stars Dance Tour. Uh, you've done I believe three other tours, but this is by the first one by yourself, um, and this is your first world tour. Yeah. So I think you just got back from Europe not too long ago. I think it, this tour officially wraps up here in about a month or so. But how has it been treating you this this first tour on your own? It's been really fun. I've learned so much, especially because I was always the girl that wanted to put the band up front with me, and I had that to lean on. So to literally dominate the stage and try to be demanding with just me, it, it really has taught me a lot, you know. And you've had a your, your big fa passion in fashion. Yes. And, um, you had a say in what you wanted to wear as far as wardrobe goes in the tour, right? Little yeah. And with your dancers, is that right? Right. I've changed the wardrobe like five times on this tour just because I I constantly love to to keep it fresh. And I think fashion is a fun way to express. You get a couple of looks when you get on stage, yeah, different I got looks? four looks on okay. stage. And then my dancers have about three. And then I do a little like skirt change in the middle. So, yeah. When you are done with this tour, you're going to take a little break. I think I heard that maybe take a which deserved break, of course. Is it from music? Um, I'm just not really. I don't think I'll ever stop. I just think I'm, I love to balance film and music, and that's hard to do. But I love both so much. So I think I'm just going to try to get back into doing, you know, a couple more films before I get back into music. Do you, I, I, and it's hard to say, people will ask you, do you like acting better than being a musician, but it's, isn't it kind of both the same as far as passion, but is there one that you may prefer more? Kind, it's not really this, it, I get two different f feelings, you mm. know, like when I'm acting, I'm, I'm playing a character in somebody else's life and I'm in Vancouver for three months working 18 hours a day and nobody cares. And then you're on stage and you have all these people listening and you have you have a voice and you're able to, to speak into these kids or girls or you know, families, and it's a really cool feeling. So I get I get two different urges. By the way, congratulations, a brand new baby sister. I think this was five months ago. Yeah, she's about. Oh, sorry, she's about four months now. So, so you are officially a big sister. I am. I'm a big sister, and that's completely been great. It's changed my whole perspective, and you know. She's I think, well, obviously, and I think I speak for everybody else. You're going to be a wonderful role model as a big sister. You've, you. you've had a lot of practice because there's a lot of young girls out there who obviously look up to you because of the head that you have on your shoulders, how grounded you've been, how uh, a person, how well you've just received everything in the last couple of five years or so. Uh, are you nervous at all? Becoming like, what is it that you want your younger sibling to look for in you as you get older? I think... I think that I'm I'm definitely not I'm definitely not perfect. I make a lot of mistakes and and I always try to figure out a way to carry myself out of those situations or those mistakes as best as I can because that's just how I know. So I think it's really good that I've been able to mess up and do a couple of things on my own so I could be there to speak into her and tell her what I have been through. So I mean it has 
put a little bit more pressure on me now having this little angel like look up to me so okay yeah. well last couple of questions and these are from our, our fans on our Facebook page so they wanted to add, I told them that I would ask them directly to you on their behalf so maybe you can help help us answer yeah. it uh, this is from Carla Medrano if you could have a normal day without cameras and flashes what would you do and she says that she loves you oh thank you I honestly I would I would just love to go sightseeing and walk around certain places just because I, I love I love feeling like a tourist too sometimes I like feeling like you know I can walk around and see all the cool places and then it's like you feel like you're in a fishbowl so I would just take advantage of it I'd walk around and just get lost okay and this is from Christina Martinez she says is there anything you'd like your fans to know about you that the media has hasn't or won't talk about um what have they not talked about true I uh, I don't know. I think that they, they tend to focus on a lot of the headlines that is going to get people to click their little thing. Right. So, honestly, I, I wish that they would focus more on, you know, you know, the art of everything and just wanting to make even the fans or other things more noticeable. But, hey, it's a part of it. You know, it's part of what I do. And That's right. I'm I'm guilty of it, you know. I'm like, ooh, what's Rachel Bilson wearing? I'm like, <laughs> you know, it's yeah, we it's, it's human. All right, Selena Gomez, we're backstage at the AT&T Center, the Stars Dance Tour. Thank you so much for spending some time and talking to us, and have a wonderful uh, uh, tour tonight. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much.